Today, my family and I got to come aboard Coast Guard Cutter Mackinac out of Sheboygan, Michigan to lay my sister, Molly, to rest in Lake Huron. Morning, Jeannie Green. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Molly was my big sister. She was only 18 months older than I am, so we did a lot of the same stuff. And I've been looking back and I was really, I copied almost everything she did, including this. Um, in a way, she like showed me this path so I think Molly really was my, like, northern star. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're going to get underway here shortly. Departing Sheboygan at 9.30. Winds are 5 knots, bearing a 192. It's clear outside. Water temperature is 72. Air temperature is 66. Underway! <laughs> This is like so amazing that we get this, I'm trying to feel worthy of it as well. So it feels incredibly special and it's really, really humbling. You were on Hollyhock with Molly? Yeah, I was on first Louis. Dude, like, I don't know. So Molly and I haven't spoken since Cleveland. I still don't fucking I don't know what happened. Yeah. yeah. earlier this spring. I was at Coast Guard headquarters. I've never been there before. At that point, Molly and I hadn't spoken in years. Uh, we had a falling out many years ago. I was at headquarters for three weeks and a handful of people encouraged me to try to go say hi to Molly. I really didn't want to do it. So Jeannie, when she was here for the class at headquarters, she told me that her and her sister weren't on speaking terms for years. Um, and she confided in me about that. And I told her, my brother and I used to be that same way. When I grew up, like my brother and I, we didn't really get along. We just like, didn't like each other. And there came to a point when I was in college and he was in college that we realized we're family. Whether we like each other or not, it, it doesn't matter. Family must stick together. And so we reconnected. And in doing so, we became best friends. And we still talk every day. We still encourage each other. And I told Jeannie this story and I was like, listen, no matter what she did to you, no matter what you did to her, you got to find a way to reconnect. She said, okay, let me think on that. And uh, at the last day of class, she said, okay, I'm ready. Can you reconnect me? Matt finally took me back to where Molly works and pointed me to my sister. You know, we said hello and that was pretty much it and then I left. But I have this like, it's a belief that I tried and that's something that Matt gave to me. It was a start. It was a start to a reconnection. Not many people take that first step, put the all pride aside and everything away to take that first step, and she did, which is, it's inspiring. The morning of May 13th, Molly was struck on her motorcycle going to work. Molly Waters was injured in a motorcycle accident as she was pulling into Coast Guard headquarters Monday morning in D.C. When Molly's accident happened, a Coast Guard petty officer, Alan Williams, was first on scene to give her CPR. He was on the way to work at Coast Guard headquarters. This is someone that's going to work to do paperwork. This is not someone that's out on a small boat, you know, pulling people out of the water. This is not someone in a helicopter that's gonna jump out. This is someone that's gonna have a normal day, a normal quiet day. And he did not hesitate to throw himself into a life-saving situation. So he gave chest compressions for what we believe to be 10 to 15 minutes. Had he not done that, by all accounts, Molly would have been pronounced dead on scene. He bought us all time to get there, to hold her hand, to say our goodbyes. He did something amazing. He stopped to put his own safety at risk to help someone that he didn't know or know at the time was a Coast Guard member. He just stopped to help an innocent bystander. He's a hero. I, there's no short, there's nothing else to describe other than the word hero. University Hospital. I got it, don't worry. What floor? Second floor. Second. 
The evening of the Wednesday after Molly's accident, the doctors at the hospital sat us down together as a family and they broke the news to us that Molly's brain activity did not indicate recovery. Molly was very clear in her living will that she wanted to be an organ donor. Jeannie and I were, uh, were communicating via text pretty regularly. I think it was Wednesday night that uh, I got a text from Jeannie that says, uh, the doctors said there's no brain activity and we're gonna pull her off life support. You know, my mom was in f stage five renal failure and has had kidney disease for 29 years, has had a slew of health issues related to the kidney and is in desperate need of a kidney. And I actually sat on the, on the bed with my wife saying, how do I ask for someone's kidney when they're still alive? You know, how do, how do you make that, that request to someone and not sound insensitive? And how do you, how do you make that, how do you ask? Like, how, how do you ask someone that so personal? It was very tumultuous for them to, to make this decision, and they did, and Matt texted me. And I have the texts, and I look back at them often because to me they are courage. next morning, I asked my mom about it and she was 100% on board. And somehow, they were a match. Blows my mind. Jeannie gave me my mother back. My mom before this couldn't do very much. Everything that we as a family did had to revolve around what my mom's limitations were. By Jeannie saying yes, that she's gonna do what she can for my mom to get that kidney, meant not only the world to us as a family, but also gave my mom the ability to be more of a mom instead of us caring for her. She can now act as a mom and do the things that she couldn't do before. Commander Waters is an organ donor, and today the staff at the George Washington University Hospital thanked her with an honor walk. I want to thank all of you uh, for being here today as we take a moment and we honor the life and the service of Commander Molly Waters. Perhaps one of the greatest things that can be said about Molly in this moment is her commitment to the Coast Guard's values. Honor, respect, devotion to duty. And those of you that know Molly, you know this, those just weren't Coast Guard values, those were her personal values. It's why we're here in this moment, gathered in this hallway, because Molly lived a life of service, a life of giving her life away for others. And even in her death, she will continue to give her life away to others. We had time to have this overwhelming support from the Coast Guard, um, to have the, the halls of the ICU at George Washington University Hospital lined with men and women in uniform, like surreal. As you're walking through these halls and seeing like, I sailed with that guy. Oh, she was my roommate on this ship. Coast Guard Academy classmate. Molly's classmate who yelled at me when I was a swabby. Just all these familiar faces there that, that went out of their way to come say goodbye to Molly was incredible. And salute.
Unto Almighty God, we commit the soul of our sister departed, Commander Molly Waters. Mm -hmm.